Before we get into this edition of Titans Today, shout out your dad in the comment section. It is Father's Day after all. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Give your dad a much-deserved shout-out in the, in the comments of today's show. With Titans minicamp and OTAs now over, I do want to have a little brief conversation on Will Levis, knowing that training camp and preseason still quite a ways away. It is a very massive year for Will Levis, who I think mostly had a pretty strong spring overall, mostly positive results during minicamp. Uh, our friends over at the Tennessean did track all the stats from the open OTA practices and the open uh, minicamp practices. They had Levis, they're charting at 64.9%, six touchdowns, two interceptions, and there were also three drops, one of which would have gone for a TD as well. Now, in general, I think it's nice to have these stats. More information available is almost always a good thing. I would also say, do not overreact to these stats. This is the practice of a practice, basically. This was not real games. It's not even real training camp, 12-on-12 12 12 stuff. There was not even like normal reps. The, the, the mini camp reps and the OTA reps that you get are not the same as actual gain reps because we don't know the down and distance in most cases. And more often than not, it's install. You're working on things for the games themselves. You're, you're challenging yourself maybe in a different way than you would in an actual game. You're trying to test things out. You want to know your limits. You're installing a lot of red zone and a lot of third down stuff. Yeah, you know, this is kind of a no-duh, but hey, third and 10 situation is very different than first and 10. Or inside of two minutes, down by six points. Very different than up by three points in the final five minutes of the game. And the things you do are completely different as a result. So do not overreact to those stats. I think they're pretty good, all things considered. Also, do not worry about training camp INTs. We've seen it with some teams and some players and some fan bases and some rival fan bases trying to victory lap every camp INT. I do not care. I, I do not care. I just want to see overall good things from Will Levis at camp, probably some in the preseason, maybe like a couple drives he gets or whatever it ends up being, and growth over the course of the 2024 campaign. So with that in mind, play fill in the blank. Will Levis will be a top blank quarterback at the end of the season. Top 20, top 15, are you feeling a little bold and saying top 10? It'll be the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad comes here on YouTube, it's fine. Ignore that ad, head down there and fill in the blank in the comments section, the pinned comment of today's show. Also want to discuss the right guard battle that is going to be brewing for a while for Tennessee. Doubt that one gets solved in training camp early on. Might stretch into some of the, uh, the preseason as well. Seems like there are three main contenders for the right guard spot. It's Dylan Radens, who is playing guard full-time. We'll hear from him in a second. Sadiq Charles, the off-season pickup from the Commanders and Browns in recent years. And Daniel Brunskill, who I think at minimum probably carves out a nice top backup on the interior offensive line role. Here's what Dylan Radens said about playing guard full-time. The first time I sat down with Bill Callahan, that was the conversation we have. Just moving to guard and working predominantly at guard. I know I can play other positions as well, but just being able to focus on one is nice. Being able to learn from Bill at that one spot has been awesome. I have learned a lot so far, and it's going well. So of the three contenders for the right guard spot, who do you think ends up carving out that starting gig? R for Dylan Radens. C for Sadiq Charles, and B for Daniel Brunskill. Let me know where else but the comments. The snap counts last year between Brunskill, Raidens, and Charles, different roles, different teams, 100 and change, and almost under, 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 under I should say, under 150 snap count differences there. Raidens out, or outplayed Brunskill and Charles in run blocking. Overall grades favored Brunskill, Charles was a little bit lower. Despite that, that might have been a team thing because they're all interconnected after all. As, as much as we can try, and PFF does try to independently eval players, there's a pretty strong correlation between, hey, the guy next to you was really bad, and suddenly your grade suffered as a result. That's not uncommon. That's just how football chemistry works, especially along the offensive line. But I would not sleep on Charles here. Here's what Jim Wyatt 
of Tennessee Online wrote about the O-line competition. Guard and tackle. We'll probably talk more about tackle later on. As far as as for what I think will happen at right guard and right tackle, I'm going to go with Sadiq Charles at guard and Nicholas petit Friere at tackle. But there's a lot to be determined, especially because of health. That was more for MPF, but it's a long battle still to go. Speaking of the offensive line, you can get the J.C. Latham rookie jersey over at chatsports.com slash Latham. We'll put that link in the comment section and the description of today's show for you guys. It is the official NFL rookie jersey of the Titans' new left tackle. If you want to rep the first-round pick, who hopefully is a bit better than some of the recent ones for Tennessee, go get his jersey at chatsports.com slash Latham. Before we go, some hype for an undrafted free agent I wanted to get into from Gabe, or er, it is on, I should say, Gabe Judy Lally, who to an extent uh, is going to be, a, I, I suspect, and maybe I'm wrong, you can tell me when it in the comments if so, I suspect a, a bit of a fan favorite given his overall college career path. He's gotten a lot of praise from media, from coaches, and from teammates for what he's done so far. Jim Wyatt writing that cornerback Gabe Judy, Judy Lally, who played at both Vanderbilt and Tennessee, hence the fan favorite angle, uh, continues to get himself noticed. He was sticky in coverage again on Wednesday. Meanwhile, veteran corner Chidibe Awuzie had this to say on GJL, which is what I'm, I'm going to call him because it's kind of like JGL, like Joseph Gordon-Levitt, but different. He's really smart, really keen to the game. He's a student of the game. He's always asking questions. Seeing that as a rookie, he's doing everything correctly. He's, he's giving himself the best opportunity to be great this year and to really have an impact on this team. He's definitely taking advantage of his opportunities. Some more conversation to come on this, but prediction time. Will he make the roster? Why for yes and for no? I want to hear you guys' thoughts and predictions in the comment section of today's show. I think there's a handful of roster locks on this team. Legereus Sneed, Chinebe Awuzie, Roger McCreary. Caleb Farley's contract basically make, makes him a roster lock. The draft pick investment in Jarvis Brownlee makes him one. I think that leaves one spot open. Now, Trey Avery's the veteran. Tay Gowan's been around the, the league for a little bit. Uh, but then there's Kendall, Eric Aror, uh, GJL as well. There is opportunity to carve out a role because I think Tennessee carries six corners. That's how, that's how most teams tend to operate. And I guess Avery, veteran might be pushing a little bit, but it's, it's fine in the end. What's noteworthy to me is, I'll be up front with you guys, I did not study him coming out of this year's draft for our NFL draft coverage of Chat Sports. He did not crack my top 300 in terms of evals there. And there weren't a ton of, of high-end impact plays in, in terms of coverage. You know, There's a handful of pass breakups, nothing eye-poppingly sh shattering there. He is one of the few uh, players who end up being the, hey, I played three different schools, whatever, um, BYU, Vanderbilt, and T Tennessee. The athletic testing was okay. Not 4640 isn't great for someone who's a shade under 190, but playing the game is what matters, not how good of an athlete you are. So I suspect that there is a chance he can carve out a role, maybe not even on the game day roster, but practice squad could also be a strong possibility there. We will have more Titans coverage for you right here on the channel. So if you haven't already, Hit that sub button, youtube.com slash titans today.